What's up guys, it's Danny here from Alpha's Trend. In this tutorial, we're going to dive in on how to create natural lighting in interior scene using sun and sky system and HDRI images. Which is better? We're going to find right now. We're going to start by adding a light into this scene. We're going to create a Corona Sun, just click, drag and move it up. Now if you go to the Modify tab, we can add a Corona Sky into the environment. Let's take a look. Ok, you can see it right here. And actually I want to drag it into the Material Editor so we can see its parameters. So notice that the sky environment is actually acting as a light source of its own. Even if we delete the sun or turn it off, we're still gonna get lightning coming from the Corona sky map, much like an HDRI. We can control the intensity, we can control the sky mode, which is actually now on uh, the new improved version, and we can change which sun if we have several uh, corona sun we can decide which one is going to be connected to the corona sky map but for now we're not going to leave everything as default and let's just focus on the sun itself we want to make sure that it's uh, on and we're going to keep it as realistic and visible to the camera okay let's move to the camera view before uh, hitting the render button, I want to first of all add an override material so, so everything will get the same basic gray material. This would help better understand the light effect and will make the render time much faster. So I already have this material inside here and I would like only to exclude the windows so the light could come inside. Now let's start the interactive render. Now let's go and play a bit with the sun direction. Now just before that, in order to stay on the camera view, I'm going to the setup panel and I'm going to lock the camera view. Let's go to top view. Ok, so I think I'm gonna go with this direction where the sun enters inside the living room and casting shadows on the furniture. Now I know you probably looking at this and thinking oh my god this is look horrible. But uh, don't worry we're gonna fix it right now. So to address this overexposed image look we're gonna turn on the tone mapping. And you have this kind of tone mapping also in uh, V-Ray. I'm going to leave the exposure for now uh, at uh, zero. And I'm, I will start with the highlight compression. This is will actually compress all this harsh area. So let's bring it up. Now you can see we are starting to see much more details in the shadows. Let's bring it up more. I think we can do with uh, 5 for now. Let's see, before it was on 1. You can see everything is burned out. And 5 is much, much better. Now next we're gonna tweak the white balance. If you right click on this area, you can look at the RGB section. And we want to get the, these three numbers almost the same. So now we can see that the red color is higher, so we need to decrease the white balance. Now it's a little bit bluish, let's make it something like, like so. We can even tweak the green or magenta, but we're gonna leave it for now. And we're gonna increase the contrast. Right now the image looks very flat. 
I'm gonna bring it something like five. Okay, this was one. You can see very washed out image. And let's do it like five. Next, we have this saturation. Every time we increase contrast, we are introducing more saturation into the image. So it's a good idea to reduce it a bit. We can even add some filmic highlight effect. If we increase it to one, take a look at the highlights over here, get a little bit washed. This was zero and this is one. I like to keep it on five, point five. And you can do the same for the shadows. If we make it one, you can see that the shadows get a little bit brighter. And we can make it one as well. And also we have here a vignetting on the corners of the image. Let's make it one for now. So this was the before. Huge, huge difference. This is the after. Next, I'm gonna add some bloom and glare. You can maybe reduce it a bit. And I'm gonna add a bit of sharpening so we can get a very crisp image. I really like to tune all these settings right at the start of the project so it will be very close to the end result after post-processing. So now what can we do with this uh, sun and sky? Let's try and get different effects to our lighting. I'm going to select the sun. Let's go over to the modify panel. And we have the intensity and size parameter. Let's see what each of these is going to give us. So I'm going to make a region here. And if we increase the size of the sun, let's say something like five, we are getting very blurred shadows. And if we make it really big, let's say like 20, we can see it much better. So for now, I'm going to leave it on five. Now let's see what happens if we reduce the intensity of the sun. Let's make it very light, like 0.2 or even 0.1. So now we get much less contrast between the bright area and the dark areas. And that's because we still have the same intensity on the Corona sky map, but we've reduced only the sun intensity. Let's increase the exposure a bit. We can now color correct the white balance because now the bluish color from the environment is much more pronounced. We can warm up a bit the image. Or we can do something else and even color correct the sky environment. So if we click on the Corona sky, add the Corona color correction, let's bring back the white balance. And now much like, let's say, a cloudy sky, we can reduce the saturation of the sky. like so and that will give us this pure white light effect now how about some sunset lighting let's see how we can achieve that as well i'm going to reduce our sun very 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 low have the sun rays come inside the living area i'm going to increase the intensity of the sun let's say 0.6 and since the sun is very low, I wanted the shadows to be very blurred. So let's increase the size to about 10. We can change the color of the sky, maybe make it more purplish by changing its uh, hue. And if we want, we can adjust the white balance a bit. Now let's take a look how we can lit our scene using HDRI map. So first off, I'm going to load an HDRI. I'm gonna add a bitmap. And I'm gonna select this cloudy one. Open it up. Going to the environment tab by clicking 8 on the keyboard. And let's drag it 
as an instance, click Alt B to go into the viewport configuration and I want to see this uh, HDRI map right in the background. So use environment background and click apply to active view and OK. Now we can see where our sun is located. Let's take a look inside here. Now I can rotate my image. Whoops, just before that I accidentally load the preview image, not the HDRI. You want to make sure that you're using the real pixel 32 BPP and click OK. Now we can see the very bright area. This is where the sun located. And let's position it right about here. Going to the camera view and hit the render button. So right now our image is underexposed. So we either can increase our exposure or we can increase the intensity of the image. So let's go to the image itself, output and increase the RGB levels. Let's also increase the exposure a bit. So as you can see, it's very straightforward, just loading the image inside the environment map and controlling the direction and exposure of the image or the camera. Let's load up a different image. I'm gonna reduce the exposure of the image. Let's play with the position also. Okay, this is kinda nice. Let's increase our exposure. We can even add the color correction. Maybe reduce the saturation a bit. And there you go. Now let's take a look of a side-by-side -side comparison between the HDRI image and the sun and sky. So as you can see in this first example, the results are pretty much the same. In the HDRI example, we can see maybe a little bit more bluish tone coming from the windows, but in overall, I think that they are pretty much the same. And regarding the render time, we can see that in the sun and sky, it took 4 minutes and 25 seconds, whereas in the HDRI it took 40 minutes and 37 seconds. A little bit more, but not a huge difference. Let's take a look on another example. In this one we have an evening setup. Again, you can see we can pretty much tweak the sun and sky even to achieve this kind of lighting, but in here I think the advantage really goes to the HDRI since you only need to plug the right image and you are set. You don't need to tweak too much parameters more than the intensity and the sun direction. And even to my surprise, it took even less time to render. This image took 14 minutes and 2 seconds, whereas in the sun and sky it took 50 seconds more. So in conclusion, I would say that most of the time I would use the sun and sky system when I want to get standard midday kind of lighting or even cloudy situation. And I would only use the HDRI to get a very unique and moody kind of lighting like in sunset situations. So let me know in the comments what you would really like to use. Is it the HDRI or the Sun and Sky? Or if you have any other creative technique, I'll be happy to know about it. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and give a like. And I'll see you next time. Bye.